Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today on Facebook Live, we made this adorable little dice box. Isn't this cool? Um, I'm doing a hello goodbye series, and we are saying goodbye to Game On. This is retiring. It's available while supplies last from Stampin' Up. And I couldn't resist. I got my dice. There's um, they're a ten pack, and I got them at the Dollar Tree. You'll find them oftentimes like on the end caps or on those like um, impulse items, the little plastic hanging tabs. Oh, try the toy aisle, 10 dice for a dollar. That's how they're wrapped. Let me get these guys out of here. I wanted to leave them in the package so I could show you in case you want to try this. It's a really kind of a fun little gift for just a dollar. The sentiment says roll with it. Wouldn't that be kind of fun for your friends who are like to play games or maybe somebody who's struggling a little bit just some kind of fun encouragement to roll with it for those gamers in your life it's just a cute little box let's do it so the game on stamp set is available while supplies last with that we are saying goodbye um, we're gonna say hello to a couple of things in this video we're gonna look at some of the new in colors and some new designer series paper so let's start with that got the designer series paper here, you need two pieces that are one half inch by three and an eighth, and you need two pieces that are one and a quarter by three and an eighth. And the back side of this has got a really great little kind of bubble. These are designer series papers from the new party pattern host exclusive pack. So this mega pack is free for hostesses or for anybody who has an order of $150 or more. This is great for you to pick up. You put all your orders in all at once or team up with a friend. Each of you order $90 and you can each have half of this mega pack of paper. Really awesome new host exclusive from Stampin' Up. All right, we're also saying hello to some of the in color items. This is polished pink ribbon and the polished pink, um, what are these ones called? In color jewels. Look at the sparkle on those guys. We're going to make our box today, though, with the Evening Evergreen, and we're going to grab those Evening Evergreen jewels. So those are our hellos and our goodbyes. Let's make a box here. All right, slide everybody to the side. You're going to start with a piece of basic black cardstock. This piece is 4 and 7 eighths by 4 and 5 eighths. This one into the Simply Score tool, and we're gonna score on the four and five eighths inch side first. All right, so four and five eighths, and we're gonna score at five eighths, and at two, two and five eighths, and at four. And you want to rotate once to the right on the four and seven eighths inch side. You're gonna score at five eighths, three and seven eighths and four and a half. So there's our cutie little box. Let's work the scores with bone folder and then we'll trim it up according to the template. If you're new to kitchen table stamper, the template, I always make a template of all my boxes. It makes it really easy to go back and um, find other treats that fit in the same box or to make the box again if need arises for a gift or for a craft fair or whatever. You've got this great visual. So I always make myself a template and I share a picture of that template on the printable project sheet that's available at the blog. So you don't have to scribble down any of the measurements. Just pop on over to the blog and print the project sheet. Everything will be there, and the link for that is below in the description if you're watching on YouTube. If you're already on the blog, you're going to find the, dis the um, printable project sheet in a link that says click here for the, in this case it'll say game on dice box project sheet. When you click that, a printable PDF comes up. All right, so we're going to start by cutting out this very little um, square in the bottom left corner. Just cut it off. And then we're gonna cut kind of an angle here and cut off these top two, this teeny little rectangle and square. All right, this is next. We're going to go from the top of the box. We're gonna work there first and we're gonna cut out 
this next score line, we'll do a small little dart that just debulks the score line and liberates those tabs, then move over one score line and do the same thing. We're gonna cut down. We won't do the dart, we'll just cut down to the second score line because here we can cut all the way across. This is the front of our box right here. Just stop when you get to that next score line and then cut out at the next vertical score line. All right, now these horizontal score lines here, we're gonna cut and those will be the tabs for the inside of our box. Cut off the score. We want a nice clean line without all that scarred paper where it was scored. So there is the top of our box. Now let's work on the bottom. We're just gonna liberate these four tabs by cutting out these three score lines with a little dart. Stop when you hit the intersecting score line, take a little bite out of there, just a little bit to debulk, and then move on to the next two. Ha, so good. All right, I wanna round these corners. You can use the detail trio punch or whatever corner rounder you have. I am not the biggest fan of those triangle punches. I'll never tell you a lie at Kitchen Table Stamper, that's for sure. <laughs> You'll always know where I stand. Um, product review. Stampin' Up! makes the greatest products on the market, but I don't love every single thing, so I'm just going to round my corners here. If you're looking for something that does a corner round, something that's current, the Detailed Trio Punch is what you're looking for. All right, now, when we do boxes, we always want to make sure that the adhesive um, is on the correct side so that when we fold up all of our seams go to the back do you see that so on the back the seam to go to the back of the box so this is the front side of our box which means this side is going to get our designer series paper we're going to put one piece in each of these panels this is our glue tab on the left hand side so i'm going to grab multi-purpose liquid glue and i'm going to cover this box with the designer series paper All right, don't try to close it up yet. We've got a few steps left here to go. Let's get a little punch. You can do something of your choice. I've got the retired half inch circle. We're gonna punch a little thumb notch so that we can open our box more easily and die cut a little window in our box. Ready? All right, Stampin' Up! Grid Paper has an excellent centering ruler right up at the top. Let's mark center. And you just want to split the difference between these two tabs. Make sure that it's equal on both sides and make your mark. It's hard to find that mark in that black and white pattern. <laughs> Better punch before I lose it, before I lose track of it. All right, it's about a half a circle, so my circle there. Now, stamp and cut an emboss machine, and we've got a little die. This is the very smallest clipped corner rectangle stuck in my magnet bowl from Hippo and Friends. We tried a couple of different things, and this is really just the perfect window for this box. It's this smallest little guy, Hippo and Friends die set. And we're going to set this so that we have enough room here so when we tuck this tab in the front, we won't see the tab in the window. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're positioning. We'll center it right to left, but we're gonna add the window high of center. Okay, tape that guy down. Let's run it through the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. I love this box. Such a cute little box. I have to look and see what other things fit. This was made custom for this 10 pack of dies. So we're going to remove, there's our window. We're still not quite ready to fold it up. You can add some tear and tape, but don't roll up your box yet. I'm going to put some tape on our glue tab, and then we want our seams to go to the back, so we'll lift and put adhesive on the bottom 
tab of the front panel. And now in my little kit here, I cut ahead of time. I've got window sheet. And the window sheet should be one and a quarter by two and a half. And what I did with my window sheet, because it's dice and it's not really going to um, leak or cause a problem like that, I just put a little piece along the bottom, popped it in, centered, and then I'll put a little bit across the very top of the window here. We want to make sure that the window sheet covers it entirely. We don't want to end up gluing our box shut with any exposed adhesive. And that's really all I did because these guys are not going to like leak out. We just don't want them to fall out of the opening. We'll varnish that with a tear and tape. You know you've got a good uh, grip on that window sheet when you start to see some of that white work out and it becomes a little bit more transparent. Now we can go ahead and fold up our box. So we'll take the glue tab, not at the first fold, but at the second fold, we'll fold in. And then from the back side at the next fold, you're going to fold in and make sure your corners line up, your score lines are nice, and then you can burnish. For the bottom of the box, you're going to put the side tabs in bring them back to the front and then the front to the back. Now all of our seams go to the back of our box. Very professional, very professional. Square this up real good right now. You can burnish from the outside and then you can also burnish from the inside using your bone folder. At this point, you can go ahead and load it up, put your dice in there. It'll make it a little bit easier for you to tie your bow. All 10 are gonna fit nice and tidy. Hmm, except I can only find nine. No, seriously, I can only find nine. I threw it away. I threw it away with the packaging. There we go. Don't throw your last die away with the packaging. It doesn't work. All right, there's our little box. And notice how when we tuck that flap now, you do not see it in the window. So you need enough room there to cover. It's very crucial. Isn't it great? All right, we gotta do a little bit of stamping. So let me slide aside our box and get some ink. I got Memento Tuxedo Black and scraps, like literally got this, you know, this little scraps of white I could find. We're gonna ink up, roll with it. Let's make sure it fits on the little scrap that I got. Really good little scrap. I think it's gonna be just fine. Roll with it, and then our little dice. Love this set, I am so sad it's going. Haven't even nearly done enough with it. There's our dice. Nah. Let's see if I can get a little bit stronger impression. Nah. Looks good either way. All right, now, got a black Stampin' Blend, of course you could grab your Stampin' Right, and we're just gonna touch with a little dot and really reinforce. This is our only coloring on this. You can make a lot of these really easy. I found this one I had to be a little bit careful because of the perspective. All your dots will run together if you make them too blobby. All right, scissors, let's trim off our greeting. And we're gonna trim it pretty close. Maybe even a little bit below. Ransom note style. I think I like that. Eh, maybe even a little bit off the top too. It's like a haircut, we'll take a little bit off the top. Pretty soon we're going to be giving Barbie a haircut and she's going to be bald, so we're going to stop right there. And our dice, let's cut these guys out. I cut the dice with just a tiny, tiny little white border, but I cut off the shadows at the bottom. So it's pretty straight cuts here. 
but right here in the shadows, I cut them off. Right here, I cut off the shadows. Cut up to show the back of this one. And down to show the side of this one. Cutting off those shadows. So they really kind of look like they're rolling. They're in play. There's our sentiment, our dice, our box. All right, so instead of the polished pink this time let's grab evening evergreen and see what a difference that makes we're going to wrap the box and tie a bow i wasn't sure how i felt about this really dark green with black and white but the polished pink is so feminine thought we'd see if it looks a little bit more masculine with the evening evergreen when i do it live tomorrow on facebook live i might try the fresh freesia we'll see We'll see if we keep exploring with the color or if I repeat one of these. I really personally like the polished pink, black, and white, but it's definitely a little bit more feminine. All right, I like the bow. Get some ribbon scissors. Cut this off. How do you like this open weave? It's really got a little bit of shine to it. It's kind of cool. We're going to bring the knot all the way down to the bottom corner there. And dimensionals for the back of our dice. Uh -huh. And it's a little box, so let's give it some good coverage of the dimensionals. We don't want to lose our dice when we take these out to play. Add those guys on the box. And then this guy's going to go over the dice and over the window. So we're going to put a little under with it, but not under roll. Okay, so let's grab a little half of a dimensional here on the back of with it. And then on the back of roll, we're going to add a glue dot. So we're spanning two heights with our adhesive. We need two different kinds. We'll put that right along the bottom of our box. Love it. Oh my gosh, I like the green too. Okay, let's get some of those little fancy jewels. They're so sparkly and they've got kind of an oil slick. They've got um, a little bit of a rainbow. They throw a little bit of a rainbow over the color. All right, I'm gonna do a big one and two little ones. I'm gonna put my big one up here. I don't want it to interfere with my dots. This is such a dark color. But it's pretty cool. All right, little one down here, kind of close to the bow. I think I'm gonna grab one more little glue dot because the end of that is popped up a little bit, and we want this to be nice and nice and st nice and sturdy because it will get handled. So I just tuck another little glue dot under there. Ha <laughs> ha! What do you think? Evening evergreen, polished pink. Hello, and a very fond farewell. Happy retirement to game on. <laughs> All right, you guys, if you've got any questions about the project or getting your hands on this retiring product before it's gone, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. You can shop 24-7 at marissaelvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.